Hello and welcome along to our review of the 2012 Long Jeans Singapore Gold Cup, the third running of the great race under the banner of Long Jeans. 2200 metres on the turf, we stand here prior to race number one. Conditions are absolutely perfect. We've got a track at 5.6 and soft, but if these conditions continue, it should be very good by the time we get to race time, which is race number 11 on the program. Of course, if we get rain like we did last year, then anything could happen. 16 horses, a great race over the 2200 metres. They race for $1.35 million in prize money. Let's take a look at some of the lead up action to the Long Jean Singapore Gold Cup. White Cat Olazarzak, Influence Run on, but Flax annihilates them, wins by three. Adol's getting through, but Better Life, the mere went to the front of the Panasonic Crunchy Mile, and Better Life races away. Fighter Daddy's just clearing away, and Fighter Dagger smashing Vince Smith's rivals by seven lengths. It's Arowana.com, Fat Kid flies down the outside, but Arowana.com too good. Arowana.com by a length over Fat Kid. Deep Pockets going to him, Tom is rattling through, but Deep Pockets, Deep Pockets out in the middle, just gets in from Great London. Lazar just in front, Honest Broker coming in quickly on the outside, they hit it, tight and say Lazar. Flying Fulton trying to run him down. Zach Effluence clear for Shafiq and he takes the pro and constructs stakes. Clint races away in a big victory. Clint's going to claim the Emirates Singapore Derby by two. Morris Chitrillo, I'd say, but they're out of sync their heads. Maybe Morris Chitrillo from Cash Luck. Very promising three year old. He storms away and Cash Luck easily by four. Lightning Thief getting tight, Sakima coming in, but Lightning Thief, a good right, wins by a neck. Gingerbread Man in front, Minor Peak levels up on the outside of Minor Peak. Hint goes to Lazar, Hint finishing all over the top of Lazar, and Hint gets up to score. Martial Art went to the lead over Morris and Trillo. Over on the inside is El Dorado, but another record for Marira. With about 75 metres to go, might have peaked. Tenzing's putting in the big strides on the outside. They draw to the post. Devonshire in front. King Falcon flashes through on the inside, but Devonshire. And we do have a... Uh... A yielding track which has been upgraded, 5.4 for the, the track, started off soft at 5.6, so good to see that the conditions have improved and the turf track is certainly racing uh, quite kind to here this afternoon. 5.4 in yielding, we are out four metres from the inside, the long course bead. We've got our standing jockeys going around and earlier on, just a short time ago, Matt Jones caught up with some of those. We're down in the jockey's room here, just moments away before the uh, Gold Cup. Yeah. Got a few of the jockeys here, Stevie Bass too, he's on martial art, he ran a terrific race last year, Stevie. Last year, Stevie. Yeah, Matt, he probably yeah, should have won last year, so um, I'm hoping today the sting's out of the track, I'd probably like it a little bit wetter, but um, we've got an awkward gait, but uh, he's, he's working really well and uh, fingers crossed. Craig knew it's over from Australia and uh, Craig's across to ride Cliffs Brown uh, Tenzing. Promising horse, you've made the journey over, Craig. Yeah, absolutely. He's got no weight. Uh, he's a little bit out of form at the moment, but if he recaptures his best form, he should be somewhere about. Well, good luck to you. Let's have a look at uh, Baron Vorster, who's over here. Baron had a terrific day thus far. You got Morris Utrillo in the Group One. Yes, uh, he's a bit of an outside chance, lightweight, but uh, he's an old campaign and uh, he'll be coming from off the speed, so we're just hoping for a good run. Well, good luck to you, Baron. Over to uh, Denny Beasley. Uh, Denny, you're down to ride cash luck. He's a promising stayer and his form's come good at the right time. Yeah, he's got a sense of time in it, um, about him, Matt. He ran really well the other day and uh, earlier in the year he ran second to super easy in the guinea, so uh, brings that form and runs a trip. He's going to run well. OK, good luck to Denny Beasley. Uh, Jose Verenzuela, you've drawn the wide stall on Flax. Uh, well, you know, he's uh, doing very good and, you know, I hope uh, he can bring the, his uh, A game and he tried to do the same, you know, he did uh, the time before. So I don't think it's, uh, uh, you know, everybody's talking about uh, he draw outside and, you know, last time he won from the 12th, he's only a uh, four stall uh, wire. So um, we'll see. And uh, finally, we've got Joe Marira just putting his silks on. Uh, Joe, you've got deep pockets, tremendous hope here at the lightweight. Yeah, last time he ran second to flex. 
was a big afford of it. Now the weight is going in his favour, so I'm just really looking forward to see it on top of him. Got some terrific uh, riders, terrific horses in the Gold Cup. We're really looking forward to this one. Well, one of the, uh, the favourite horses for the races is uh, Better Life, and it's going to be ridden by Alan Munro, Derby winning jockey. Alan's going to walk down to the paddock with me, uh, dominant in the Crunchy Mile, uh, stepping up to 2,200 metres today. Yeah, so it's a big step into the unknown, but everything she's done so far suggests that once she gets past the miles, she'll be dominant. But, you know, it's fingers crossed, isn't it? What about the track conditions? Uh, we always get a soft track on Gold Cup Day. Today it looks pretty good out there. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm OK with the ground. I was worried earlier, you know, I was worried yesterday when it rained. I thought it was really going to favour Flax, but, uh, yeah, luckily it's held up. You know, we've had no rain today and it's, uh, it's quite a good track. What's your gut feel? Obviously, 1,600 metres, she was absolutely dominant. She bet a lot of these horses. Uh, bypassed the 1,800 metre Raffles Cup. 2002, how do you feel? Uh, if she stays, I think she'll win, uh, but she needs to stay it well. When I get out, because Flax is going to go, he's going to lead and I'm going to have to get out and catch him, so she's going to have to quicken at the end of it, not just stay on. So, you know, it's a, it's a question mark. I don't know how she's going to go, but I reckon she'll cruise around and uh, she'll quicken. I reckon she'll win. OK, good luck. All right, thanks. Good luck. Alan Munro riding better life, one of the favourite horses in the race. It's going to be a super race, and last year, of course, we had... Um Horses that's ilk of uh, Lazar and also martial art hint. They ran second, third and fourth. They're back to do it again. But they've had a lot of injury problems along the way. How these horses that have been battling injury are going to go into the big race this year, we're not entirely sure. It's horses like Deep Pockets who've had the uh, good form. Even uh, a long price uh, shot like Devonshire, he could be hard to beat. But many people are talking about this horse, Flax, and he's owned by uh, Dennis Evans, who's got this horse. We saw Dennis, of course, uh, win the Chris Fly with Atto. You've got Flax, you've got, drawn gate number 20, but we know how gutsy a horse he is. Yes, Matthew, I think we do. It's common knowledge. He's, he's small, um, but he's all heart. And uh, if he's good enough, he'll run well enough. Yeah. You're going to need a bit of luck in the in the early part. You're going to be pushing forward? Yeah, I, I think so. It's entirely up to Jose. He'll, he'll, he'll take him where he sees to be, uh, where he wants to be in the race, and we'll leave it entirely up to him. Um, we've had incredible luck this year. Um, uh, we're just happy to be in the race and enjoy an occasion like this in Singapore. Good luck, Dennis. That's Devin Evans, uh, owner of, uh, of course, the champion Flax. And speaking of champions, we've got Laurie Lax and uh, Laurie got two in the race. Martial arts so unlucky last year. He was a bit, and uh, and he had a bit of a setback after that. But he's coming right now. His last few runs have been pretty good. I think he's he's just about there. And what about Devin Shear? Can he measure up to this level? Well, he's, he's won his uh, last two starts, his last start over 2,200 metres, so he knows how to handle two turns, and, uh, yeah, it was a lightweight. I think he ran well. Good luck, Laurie. Thanks. Yeah, well, this is the biggest domestic race of the year here in Singapore. This is the race we've all been waiting for, and Better Life, she looks like she's in with a terrific uh, chance. Alan Munro is giving her a very good push, uh, but one of the fancied runners is Deep Pockets. He'll be very hard to beat. And I think with the, the improving track conditions here today, it's going to help the chances of Flax. He'll have a firmer surface to run on. I know he's going to have to do it tough from the outside draw, but he should be hard to beat.
Righto, Frost, uh, which runner is it going to be that's going to add its name to the honour roll? This horse, Better Life, number two. She's a sensational mare. She is, and uh, she's class and got plenty of it. Uh, she's got a bit of weight here, 55 and a half kilos, but under weight for age conditions last time in the Cranji Mile, she carried the fix, 56 no problem at all. She was too good for one of our best horses here in Singapore, super easy. She's coming into the race in fantastic form. She looks a treat in the yard, big occasion here. She's handling it perfectly. Uh, a bit of a question mark whether she'll run out the 2200 metres, but her racing nature, get back, relax, run on type horse, I think she'll handle it no problem at all. I think she's the winner. And it's Deep Pockets who, at the moment, on track is favourite. Joe Marira looking to add a gold cap to what's been a sensational season. Yeah, he's uh, just had a perfect preparation leading into this race. Uh, he's a horse who raced well, finishing runner-up behind Chase Me in the Derby. Don't think there's any question with him running out the 2,200 metres. He's a real uh, dower type. And I think uh, if the pace is good enough where he can finish off, he'll be hard to beat. The handicap conditions suit him, and he's going to be the one that's really charging home late. He's a winning chance. Yeah, trainer Cliff Brown with four in the race. As we have a look at Flax, he's a pretty relaxed customer these days in the, uh, in the mounting yard. Good to see him uh, parading well. Big, big task here for Verenzuela from the wide stall. Outside draw barrier 16 is going to make it tough, and he's got 57.5 kilos. But I think it's manageable. He carried 58 kilos last time to win the Raffles Cup. That's a good lead-up. That's the best. Best lead-up race for this race. He looks terrific. He's got his name uh, on his hind quarter. Sam Hill uh, doing all the work on the horse, just keeping him nice and calm. He looks perfectly relaxed, and he looks like he's up to running a big race despite the awkward draw. Last year's runner-up, Lazar, he's had injury problems, but he's back, and he seems to be peaking at the right time. Gate number one's a huge advantage for a horse like Lazar. Um, he's had a long break-off since last year's Gold Cup when he was runner-up. It's taken him a long time to get him fit. He's just coming right at the right time. I thought if he drew out, it's going to be tough. But the, the fact he's going to jump from the inside alley, that does give him an outsider's chance. Morris Utrillo, he's a terrific horse. He ran in this race last year for us. He finished a long way back. He needs to improve a lot of spots if he's going to play a part here. Probably in better form this year, though, Matt. So yep. um, he's a last start winner. Tough little campaigner. And he won with 58 kilos last time. It's not a lot of him, but he's courageous. He's in good form. He's won two out of his last three. 50 kilos and Baron Forces having such a good day. Wouldn't be surprised if he run a cheeky race. Well, all the lead-up's been completed. Now all we're left to see is the 2012 running of the Longines Singapore Gold Cup. We'll be back after the break.